Welcome to Picks with the Professor, the show where a real statistics professor gives you sports betting tips. This is Major League Baseball for Wednesday, April 10th. I had to take yesterday off. I uh, posted this on Twitter, of course, and everyone on Dub Club got the announcement, but uh, in case you didn't, uh, you know, we just had kind of a hectic day on Monday. Uh, our, our oldest had head surgery to remove assist and everything went well so that's good uh but then her recovery throughout the day from anesthesia and then the little the little one had had a rough day so it was just a, a really long monday and was kind of expecting a long monday night so um was not able to get that out but of course we we were able to get some information out to bring the dub club if you're interested in getting that information on days we can't do the show we'll try to do them six days a week but unfortunately things do come up uh sundays we don't ever do them so when you're looking for picks and there's no show dub club is the place to be that qr code will get you a free seven day trial or the link in the show description uh it, to get you started that 10 day uh a free trial there are a lot of summaries a lot of information a lot of extra picks a lot of different ways you can go and a lot of fun over in our discord chat group as well um it, it's been a rough start to the season um i i'm not enjoying <laughs> what's transpired here over the last week or so we started off the first week pretty solid and then uh you know we just can't seem to catch a break or, or, or for every break we catch we miss out on three or four uh multiple situations tonight where we just came up on the wrong side of something where I, I didn't see every single play, but I mean, a multiple line outs and double plays uh, in situations that would have been bigger innings than they were, that would have been fine. Um, the A's being the Rangers, which we've talked along with the A's when, when games, it's just, you don't expect one guy to hit three home runs. And that'd be the only reason that, that your, your pick on the Rangers loses. Right. Uh, so, you know, for, you know, just, just a lot of things kind of, um, bouncing poorly for us, but we've long talked about baseball as a long run sport. If you go back last year and the year before, you know, we, we've, we've always been profitable in the long run of baseball. We've always had stretches uh, where it's bad. It, it's, it's just, it's more disappointing for me. And I'm sure YouTube viewer uh, to start off the season like this, it's, it's a little more, more palatable when it, when it happens in the middle of the season and you've already banked a bunch of units uh that's that's much more fun but it'll come around uh it, it always does so i'm uh, it's discouraging but yet you know we know that we'll get the right bounces eventually i will say uh the the one i was a little bit more concerned about was totals it's some updating on that here uh throughout the day we'll talk about some of those updates uh as we move along uh specifically in, in one of the picks here uh in this show so still looking at the model so trying to make tweaks always trying to make tweaks and improve never sitting back resting in our world always trying to make things better um and so we're of course trying to find that fine line between that and saying we know that some of this is just some weird random luck we've had a lot of times we've had leads in, in the ninth inning and our closures are blown it we know that's going to happen from time to time you know just things like that we just have to kind of grin and bear it it'll we'll catch up for it we had an incredible sunday uh here uh, on dub club if you got all those picks and you know on the heels of a terrible saturday and then hasn't been great since then but we'll, you know hopefully it's not quite such a roller coaster but in the long run we'll be okay we just got to keep keep on keeping on if you've been here with us for, for years before you know that's the way it goes there are some downtimes but the ups are bigger than the downs so we just got to get through it and the biggest thing is you never know when it's going to happen. You never know when it's going to turn. You never know when you're randomly have a good day and that swings things and things start going well, or when it's just a random good day like Sunday was, and then it goes back. You just, you never know. It's just completely random uh, how this plays out. And so we look to have more good days than bad days going forward, but we just unfortunately can't predict where they are. Hopefully it's today. We've got a lot of things to discuss today uh, as we're learning more and more about these teams and how they're going to look this year. Uh, and so without any further ado, we will start into that. But first, some reminders, so without any further ado, just quick reminders, of course. I kind of already went all over this, right? But uh, remember, we're, we're talking about average games. The one game we just don't know, we might have those closers do weird things. One guy hits through home runs. Um, who the heck knows? Um, when we give probabilities, we will lose some of those but that's okay because it'll help us with the favorites it'll help us with the dogs it'll help us if we're calibrated find the good prices but there are no locks and gambling and as always take what you like and leave the rest we like when you like it because it helps other people find us that helps keep us in business now without any further ado 1 p.m eastern <laughs> Tigers or the twins uh the model would give a slight edge to the twins on this one as the dog 
not enough to take it. Uh, this is the classic situation. I think we're going to find ourselves in with the Dodgers a lot of games this season where, you know, the model is going to tell us like, you know, the Dodgers are priced too high and they're going to lose some games. You just don't know when I think they lost twice to the Cubs, right? If you, you know, if you're back in the Dodgers in those, when they lose, you're going to lose a lot. Right. And fortunately with the Dodgers, we've kind of zigged and zagged about the wrong things on that. Right. But, um, you know, in the long run, the idea is we want to make sure that when we're playing the Dodgers, we get the right, we get good prices. And that doesn't mean they will win at those good prices. And it doesn't mean at a wrong, bad, a bad price, they won't win, right? Which is the, the really frustrating thing about this. But we want to make sure that we get good prices because that means when they win, it'll make up for the losses. And when they lose, we won't be losing that much relative to what we were expected to be making on that game. And in a game like this where the Dodgers are priced a little bit too high, it's not to say they won't win. Uh, it, it's to say that in, in the long run, these are the types of games that they're going to lose enough of them uh, that in the long run, it's going to slowly bleed your bank. So we're going to pass on the side here and instead go over nine, even money, C grade, not a lot of value, as you can see with the model projecting 9.1 runs, but we have a fairly normal day uh, with regards to the weather. And that's nice in that it's going to be a little bit chilly, 60-ish degrees to start, low 60s. As the, as the game moves along, but the wind will be blowing a little bit out to left field, up to 10 miles an hour, a little bit across, a little bit out. It'll give a slight boost. It'll really just offset that weather. So it'll kind of balance out and turn into a kind of average type day. Anytime we have those in April, it's not a bad idea to take advantage of it. We do have two pitchers who are capable of success, absolutely, and Bobby Miller and Chris Paddock, but uh, Paddock in his first start didn't go very deep. That's not overly surprising, but the underlying metrics, uh, are really concerning in that first start. He just projects to be average and an average pitcher on a normal weather day against the Dodgers offense can give up some runs. The twins have some relievers, but they're not necessarily the best of baseball in the Dodgers. You feel like they're going to score off anybody. So you expect them to get theirs. Of course, the twins offense is decent enough. It can be kind of hit or miss. That's the caveat in this. That's why it's only a C grade because we might be looking for the Dodgers to, to pull seven, eight runs. We might not. You just never know what the Twins offense. And that's a kind of the reason why we aren't playing the Dodgers at minus 170. Because you look at it and you say, yeah, the Dodgers have the better pitcher and they got the better offense and everything. But like minus 170 is pretty steep for baseball. We see it all the time. Weird things happen. Nobody would have thought in the same night that the A's would win. Uh at the Rangers, the, the White Sox who went the Guardians, who've been one of the best teams in baseball with regards to like run differential. Um, and, you know, that the Mets would come back and only lose by one to the Braves and the, the Rockies would only lose by one. Uh, they're one of the worst teams in baseball, right? So they, and that's the, the game isn't even over yet. So who knows what else is weird is going to happen uh, throughout the rest of the night or what I've even forgotten about, right? So uh, enough weird things happen to like minus 170. It's like, if the Twins office didn't show up, Dodgers are going to win this one easily. But if they do this over is going to cruise easily and that minus 170 is going to be in jeopardy. So I, I'm, I like the over here. I think it's a reasonable play. We have the push protection on nine. It's a day game. Uh, ball will carry a little bit better there during the day. And the, the, the way I look at it is um, if the twins give us anything offensively, we should be in great shape. If they don't, We've seen the Dodgers score eight runs in a game, and that's not the craziest thing. So we still have a chance. So the fact that we have two paths to victory here is what makes this a pretty reasonable investment, in my opinion. Over nine to start off the day in Dodgers Twins. Also, the early slot, we have two games at one o'clock. Phillies and the Cardinals are a little bit after one o'clock here. This one will be Aaron Nola and Lance Lynn. And folks, I do not trust either one of these pitchers as far as I can throw them. And both these guys are big. Like Noah's a big dude. Uh, Land's a big dude, right? So I couldn't really throw him very far anyway. Um, Nola in his two starts hasn't looked good. There were some concerns last year. The underlying metrics on these two starts aren't great either. Like he's, it, it's concerning. Like that doesn't mean he can't turn around and have a great year. It's just, it's not looked good so far. I already had some questions coming into the season. He has some of the most extreme home road splits in baseball. And every pitcher does, right? So every game has a lean to the home team because of this, right? It's built in to the model, but then some guys exhibit it more than more than others. And 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 we don't want to go chasing down this too much because you know you don't want to end up reacting to a small sample size and it just be noise because 
in life, there are a lot of things that are much more random than our brains want to accept. Uh, so we have to be careful about, about splits. Nola has been doing this his whole career for like thousands of innings at this point. So he's like one of the few guys that I'm like, it's not just, <laughs> you know, the normal home road thing. It's not a small sample size thing. Like this is a little bit more extreme. Here's the thing. I think his first two starts were at home. Um, I at least know one of them was, and, and, and it didn't go well. So I'm, I'm, I'm nervous about Nola. Um, Lance Lynn, you know, underlying metrics, a mix, mixed bag. His two starts have been a mixed bag. He's, he's had some innings where he's, he's looked fine. He's had some innings where he hasn't. I mean, it's just kind of all over the place um, with him. I, I don't, I don't know what to make of him. Both sets of relievers will be fine. Both offenses aren't great. You can look to the under on this one. I'm not dying to play the under. Almost for similar reasons I talked about that first game. Like Both these pitchers could struggle, and this under is shot. And if one of them struggles, we really need the other one to come through. And I just don't know if I trust these guys. Um, you know, it, it'll be a pitcher friendly day with regards to the conditions, but so so I'm not expecting a ton of runs. Uh, but I just don't think I can get there with the under with these guys. I just don't, I just don't trust either one of them. And, and either one of them can give up a seven spot. And if that's the case, the under is going to be in, in trouble. So with that said, we're going to take the Cardinals at plus 124. Model says they win only 45% of the time, but 45% of the time at plus 124 makes for a slightly positive expected value play. The reason I like this pick here is that I think the difference between Nola and Lynn might be a little bit smaller than the model realizes. If that's the case, the Cardinals true win percentage is probably 46, 47%. I mentioned all the time, no model is right. You know, all models are wrong and, and, and some are useful. And the idea is we're just trying to get close enough here. And that's why we tend to like the A grade plays. Uh, you know, they, they tend to have enough of a wiggle room where, in the long run, they'll they'll be fine because if we're off by two three percent, it's okay. And and this one's only a C grade play, but I, I think we might be off a little bit here because I'm just not convinced Nola's really an 82 grade right now on the road. Uh, so if if he's really more of an 84, 85, 86, uh, something like that, you know, getting up towards the mid upper 80s, which I think is not crazy to say, then you say, yeah, the Phillies have the better offense, they've got the better starter, but like on the road, Cardinals got a good bullpen. Anything can happen in baseball, as you saw here on Tuesday night with Wheeler on the mound. I don't think anybody really expected the Cardinals to, you know, do what they did. And, and you say maybe that's just bad variance to the Phillies. They left like a hundred guys on base, it seems like. But again, that's just baseball. And that's why we got to be careful with playing too big a favorite. So the Cardinals here at plus 124 kind of makes sense because you're backing a pitcher you don't know much about while fading a pitcher you don't know much about, which goes to, hey, take the home team at plus odds because it's not like they're outmatched really in the bullpen. So uh, Cardinals a decent luck there. But this is only a C-grade play at plus 124. If you can get plus 127, it's a B-grade, so it's pretty dang close to that threshold. Uh, right now, A-grade pr price more in the mid-130s. But as always, shop around for those best prices. You can get more value, and the better value you can get in the play, we put a couple more, you know, extra tenth, extra couple hundredths, whatever, you know, of a unit on it, extra few tenths of a unit on it, because we want a little bit more money on the ones that we get better value on. And that value is what's going to add up in the long run. It's going to make sure that we lose less when we lose and we win more when we win. So always shop around. And if you don't have an account yet with them yet, BetUS is a place you can do that. Link in the show description. And if you are not signed up yet, sign up today. I do not know how much longer they're going to be offering this. 125% bonus on your first ever three deposits. I mean, that's all summer. I have no idea. Uh, honestly, I do not know, but it, it could go away in time. So it's a pretty good offer here. So get started on that today at BetUS if you have not yet already. BetUS, America's favorite sportsbook and casino. Live betting and racebook. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. Plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. BetUS, where the game begins. That'll carry us into 3 p.m. Mariners and the Blue Jays. No pick on this one uh, for right now. It is Logan Gilbert and Yusei Kikuchi, both guys who've looked probably better than their underlying metrics here in their first two starts. Both pitchers are very decent. Uh, Gilbert's probably a little bit a little bit better of a pitcher. Uh, Blue Jays maybe a little bit better of an offense. Uh, a Mariners bullpen does not is not looking great. It's not grading out very well at this point. This is a pretty coin type game at a neutral. Give the Blue Jays a little bit of an edge for home. It's priced 
pretty well. The Blue Jays are the tiniest bit of favorites. They should win 52% of the time according to the model. Uh, right now it's priced really well. We'll see if there's a good, you know, first five market available um, for us maybe in the morning or if the price moves and that changes. The way I'm looking at this right now is the total, but I need to know more about if they're going to open the roof or not here. We're looking at upper 50s in Toronto during this game it's a day game the sun shouldn't set i mean that you know you're far enough north of sun i don't know exactly what the sunset time is in toronto there's a few of you who are in canada uh but i'd be shocked if the sunset's not like now that we've especially with you know getting towards the summer you know 8 p.m 9 p.m and, and this is a three o'clock start so um the sun should be out the entire day like to me i'm thinking like and, and I'm not I'm not trying to be stereotypical if you're Canadian or whatever, but like I feel like Canada, 58 degrees, you know, that's a nice day right now. No, I don't know if the sun's out or it's cloudy, right? That's the other thing too. But you know, if the sun's out 58 degrees, it feels like a warm day for for Canada for April, right? Open the roof, enjoy the weather. I don't know if they're going to do that or not, right? So it's it's you know, it, it, in Texas, I think it's pretty similar conditions in Arlington, and I'm like, I feel like they're going to have that roof closed because like as a t as a native Texan, I'm not living there now, but as a native Texan, I'm like 50 degrees is cold. <laughs> you know, we're a little bit a little bit of wimps on the on the colder weather, so um, I don't know if the roof's going to be open or not. And that's going to really matter because if the roof is open, it's chilly enough, but the ball's not going to fly that much and that's going to bring the projected total down a little bit but if that roof's closed and that means the temperature warms up a little bit not so much that it's going to be like super hot in there but just all the like body heat and everything all that's going to capture in there and it's going to raise the temperature of the place i'm not sure if they turned the heater on at all or what i think it was closed here for when for tuesday night's game and so if it you know if it was already at a reasonable temperature there overnight staying closed, like if they keep it closed, the temperature will be warmer. The ball will fly a little bit better in that regard. And so that kind of just shifts your perspective on the total. So I just need a little bit more intel here. I don't know what they're going to do with the roof. A lot of times the model, I have it coded in to kind of say, this is what we think is going to happen with the roof. And based off what happens or what doesn't happen with that or what we're projecting on that, you know, kind of can swing us one way or the other. But there's some of these cases that are just real border cases. That I don't know what they're going to do with the roof. And that kind of matters on this one. I know some people will say that the roof open, the ball carries better. There's not really any evidence of that at any ballpark. The only thing uh, that you can say is that the ball is going to carry better or worse, open or closed, based off the location, based off of when you close the roof, is it making it cooler than it was when it's open or hotter based off of if you're in the north or the south. So when you control for temperature, the roof being open or closed doesn't tend to change things very much with one exception and that's what we've seen in arizona for whatever reason in that ballpark when they close the roof a lot of times um in the cooler months there the ball just seems to like die it just doesn't carry as well but other than that most of these parks in toronto would be one of them milwaukee would be one of them you don't really see a big difference once you control for the temperature so um uh, just need to see more about the total or about, about the about the weather to figure out what the roof might do I don't really know about the total. We'll have an update on Dub Club tomorrow for that one, but right now, no official pick. 13 p.m. Eastern Diamondbacks and the Rockies. So one o'clock local start there in Denver. Folks, I mentioned at the top at the top of the show, um, making some adjustments to the to the models, checking up the totals, and and I I mentioned to some people before on on Dub Club we're talking about totals. Like it's interesting so far. The weather's been a little bit colder in April, and I, I kind of had some some stuff coded in for handling the weather of course last year we saw more runs than we would have expected in april um and part of that was like the the ball changes every year and we haven't had to talk about that much this year because i think we're using probably the same ball we did last year which is good but for the last couple of years it seems like we're talking about like what ball are we even using right and so we saw more runs but like it was a relatively warmer april uh, and this year's been a relatively colder april so far especially because we haven't even had the late april days when it gets warmer right and so the model's been kind of like, hey, it's colder, like the ball's not going to fly, but the, the number of total runs has been pretty high. And so um, trying to kind of adjust for that and figure out like how much of the runs is just like pitchers not settling in, how much of the runs is the ball. And so it'll be something we're keeping an eye on and kind of continuously adjusting, but we kind of, you know, decreased a little bit of the cold impact, the wind impact, increased a little bit of the livelier ball impact. In the model to kind of raise totals up so that we um you know don't lose as many on, on some of these unders that that you know some of them have gone over via you know extra innings but but some of them have just not even close right 
And so, um, and doing the work on this, and lo and behold, here we have a gaming course. And we, we still had a, an underpick here on, on this gaming course on Tuesday. I was like, I, you know, and it hits pretty easily. And, and so we have the same thing here, an under an underpick. It, it, it's an A grade, which is just blows my mind because we're, we're, we're trying to get over picks here. Um, but knowing what I did to the model, trying to adjust for all these things, account for these things and kind of air towards the over, the fact that we have an A grade under tells me this is a smart pick. It doesn't tell me it's going to win because in baseball, anything can happen. But you see a st that we still have a minus 10% weather adjustment. Given the changes that I made, that's really strong. The reason this total is so high is because these pitchers are terrible and they absolutely are. Tommy Henry is bad. Austin Gomber is worse <laughs> this is not good times for pitching um these rockies relievers are just all over the place they've got some guys who've looked good at times but they've been pretty rough at times as well i mean there could easily be a lot of runs in this but you saw it here on tuesday night uh, the Rockies offense, again, as I mentioned, just not very good. The Diamondbacks didn't score very many runs. And even over the weekend, the Rays didn't score as many runs as you'd think. We are seeing, for the most part, fewer runs in course. And now we've had a couple of nights. We had that like late Friday and late Saturday, I think, with the Rays. Just like random explosions of runs. But you take away like an inning or two, and there just haven't been many runs at all. So... It's, of course, the fear here with Coors, but I mean, to me, this is under or pass, and, and I think this under makes a lot of sense because even if you get an offensive explosion, you're going to probably need a couple of them to get to a number like 13. 13 is a really high number. We talk about key numbers in uh, baseball betting, but like you, you don't really have them up here because like six to six is very possible, but if you end up with 12 runs, Six to six isn't overly likely to happen. It's obviously not impossible. And I believe the Rays Rockies over the weekend, I think, had a game that was that was six to six at one point. So again, it's obviously not impossible to land six to six. And then at that point, you've lost the under, but it's not like it's nearly as common as three to three, right? And that's why we always talk about don't go under six and a half unless it's insanely great because three to three means you've lost, right? And so there's just a whole lot different value perspective from there than at this number. Um Weather-wise, we're talking mid-50s throughout the game. It's not really going to warm up. The wind is going to be blowing in from center field, from right center field, at over 10 miles an hour for the entire game. You still have a very big playing field. The ball will still carry. It just won't carry quite as well as usual. And what I mean by that is you're still going to have to hit it pretty well to get it out because this is a big park. And so to hit a home run with the wind blowing in in the temperature, like you're going to you're gonna have to hit a a, a, a true home run. It won't be a cheap course home run. Any home run will be a real solidly well hit home run. And these pitchers can give them up. Absolutely. But you have to hit it really well. You're more likely to end up seeing because of this weather, fewer home runs, you're likely to end up seeing more doubles. What would have been home runs are going to turn into doubles. Doubles will turn into outs. And again, the reason why that matters is because today's baseball is so reliant on the home run for runs you're going to have to have multiple doubles to get a crooked number. So you're likely to see a single, a double, a walk, and that be three things happening in and one run. And that's more likely what you're going to see on a day like this. We, we have to avoid is an inning where it's double, double, single, double, single, walk, double, right? That sort of thing, putting them all together. We don't expect that to happen. That doesn't mean it won't. We expect it to happen on occasion, a crooked number here or there. But as long as we're avoiding the big crooked numbers and a bunch of them, 12 and a half is a really big number for this weather. We've seen a lot of lower scores here in the course. It's a real bold pick. But again, the reason that I like this under is just knowing how I've adjusted the model and trying to get it to play overs for us. It's still telling us to play this under because of the weather which has been very much muted down i still think it's a pretty good place we're gonna go under 12 and a half it is an a grade pick for us 3 54 p.m nats and the giants this is our play of the day you can join our on a roll and dub club and get everything or we have a specific just play of the day package if you're interested in the play on this um we have been playing a lot of unders in the Giants games. Uh, and in fact, when the Nationals shifted pitchers to Ioana Doan uh, here on uh, Tuesday night, 
Uh, we actually would have had a relatively strong play on the Nats' first five, which would have cashed and said there wasn't really much value on the Giants of the whole game. So uh, tune in to Dub Club in order to see what we like on this one. Have a really strong play um, for you over there. But while we are here, folks, I think it is a great time to remind everybody about the differences in types of baseball bets that you can make because you can bet action, which means your bet is going to play no matter what, or you can bet listed, which is the pitchers that are listed are required for the first pitch. And if one of them doesn't, then your bet is going to be a push and no action. Everything that we do here, uh, I've mentioned before, this is on the website. If you've been here before, you know this goes off of listed pictures and not action. And so anytime a pitching change happens, run a new model, run a new set of picks, run a new update. What that means is two days ago, we gave out the Astros with Framber Valdez. He doesn't start. We make an update. We say there's not a great play. The Astros win. Hopefully you won too. But also if you bet your listed pitchers, you got no action. You did not win. You didn't lose, but you didn't win. Giants, we like the Giants here initially against, um, you know, uh, I can't even think of his name now, the guy who's arm, uh, Gray. Uh, because he's a guy that we have been um, fading a lot here. Um, and he's one of the best fades in baseball. Um, and he goes down and the model actually thinks Adon is a better pitcher and things change. And so we have no pick on that. Um, just something to keep in mind. There's pros and cons to both because a lot of times when the opposing pitcher gets scratched, that's a good thing. In this case, it wasn't um, because we were specifically trying to fade uh, Josiah Gray uh, because I just think he's really overvalued. Uh, sometimes it happens like with Fromber and you're like, hey, you know, I'm glad I pushed because I didn't want to play the Ashes at minus 133 or 135 or whatever they were. And uh, now you've taken out the, the better pitcher and then the Ashes win anyway. Right. So, I mean, it, you just never know in the long, but in the long run, the idea is we want to know who we have money on. So everything we go off of is listed. That's the way that handles with the sharp books. That's the way it's the default for a lot of places uh, that are, that are sharper books. If you are playing a different book, some of them don't offer that. Some of them you have to search for it. Some of them it's the default. It just depends. You got to look at your books and find out But everything we officially do here goes off of listed pitchers. That'll be the way it's all it's the way it's always been. It's the way it'll continue to go until the industry standard for the uh short books where most of us can actually get some money down. Um that's the way that it that it uh that it's that it that it's standard. And so uh affected <laughs> two nights in a row. And again one of the benefits of being on dub club when that happens is you get an update that says this is kind of the direction we're going now that we have new Starting pitchers, because of course, starting pitchers matter a lot in baseball. Uh, moving on, 4.07 p.m. Eastern, Rays at the Angels. Loved the over here on Tuesday. That was a nice little winner for us. We're going to go back to the well with the over here on Wednesday. Day game, ball's going to carry better in Anaheim. It's actually pretty nice weather here. Mid-70s in Anaheim, 2% boost the number of runs based off the slight breeze blowing out at about 10 miles an hour. You're looking at a setup for a nice number of runs here. Models projecting slightly over 10. The fact that we're at nine makes this an A grade minus 105 odds even uh, is better. Zach Littell for the Rays has had fantastic results and is trending in the right direction. The underlying metrics are really promising. And so for him, that's uh, you know very promising, especially if you're a Rays fan. Given what we saw from last year, a little bit of a mixed bag. He's got some potential for sure, but we have to remember he's still going up against an Angels offense that is still pretty solid. The Rays relievers, not as strong as they were in some of the years past. The Angels should score some runs here. The Rays should score plenty of runs too. There's a reason why they're favored, why the model gives them an upper 50% chance of winning even on the road. They have a good offense, and they'll be facing a pitcher in Jose Soriano who we don't really know what to expect from. He's had two outings this year of three innings apiece. This time he will start, and the model's projecting him to go like four, four and a third, something in that ballpark. I'm not sure how DB can go, but the underlying metrics for him, not really great, doesn't project great. That Angels bullpen's not great. Things are going to fall apart at some point here for the Angels uh, in this game, and the Rays are going to get some runs. So I'm expecting some runs both directions here. The Rays are favored. They should be favored. 
I just don't know exactly how many runs are going to be scored in this one, but you have to feel pretty confident the Rays are going to do their part and the Angels, you know, it goes back to what we talked about in that first game, right? If the Angels don't do their part, the Rays can get there against this Angels bullpen. If the Angels do their part, we're cruising to an over. I love the push protection of nine. I think this over makes a lot of sense. If I had to pick a side, I'd probably play the Rays. Uh, we're just going to be careful on the price, not playing a price that's too high because again, this Angels team probably not quite as bad as the market thinks it is. So in general, I'm not sure there's a ton of value fading the Angels, but again, knowing it's Soriano and then who knows what in the bullpen, it's razor pass and this one, but I think over is still the better direction. 16 p.m. Eastern, White Sox and the Guardians. White Sox pulling out the win here uh, on Tuesday night. But we're going to go back to Guardians minus one. See great value according to the model, uh, which, again, some of the updates, some of the tweaks, it's kind of like starting to say, hey, some of these favorites now, we're going to have to be a little bit more careful and we're going to have to scale back on them because, again, baseball is pretty random, so we just got to be careful on those. Not the best value here on the Guardians at minus one, but a pretty reasonable pick and one that even though the model has it as a C grade, one that I think is worth our investment. And here's the reason why. The White Sox have really one competent pitcher in the bullpen. That's Michael Kopech. He threw two innings to get the save on Tuesday night because the White Sox were sitting there thinking this is one of the few chances we have at a win. I assume he's not going to be available on Wednesday, and that makes that set of relievers even worse for the White Sox than the model realizes. So I think that probability the Guardians win is probably more like 73 74% because if you condition on the White Sox being in it late, the bullpen's going to be in worse shape. Now, that win probability can't go up too high up for the Guardians because there's so many situations where the White Sox aren't in the game late. And that's why they use Kopech for two innings because they realize, you know, <laughs> if if they didn't use him for the eighth, they gave up some runs, uh, and, and, you know, don't win that one. And then, you know, the next day they get blown out, right? He's just sitting there or, or they're using him in a loss, right? So it makes a lot of sense. I totally get it. Um, but that's going to affect him in this game. So I think the probability of the Guardians wins a little bit higher. So I think this really might be more like B grade value. And so I think it's worth an investment on the Guardians. So the much better team. Tanner Bybee is the better pitcher than Eric Fetty. I know that Fetty has a lower ERA, but the underlying metrics support Bybee. And of course, we're not going to focus too much on the fact that neither one of these pitchers even has double digit innings on the year. We're going to look back to last year, previous years and feel confident that Bybee is the better pitcher. The guardians relievers are better. Their offense is much better. And of course the benefit for the guardians is they are facing a right-handed pitcher in Eric Fetty. Uh, the guardians, you know, real kryptonite is of course lefties because they are so left hand heavy, but this is also going to be one of the picks in the parlay of the day. Guardians money line will be, the first of two legs with another team. So if you wanted to pass on the minus one, I definitely think the money line parlay makes a lot of sense with the Guardians because, again, it's hard to see the White Sox winning this one knowing that their bullpen has been depleted because of the close game they were in Tuesday. Doesn't mean they can't. It just means that the probability they do so is very small, and the Guardians are not being priced at such an extreme that gets you concerned. You saw on the game Tuesday, the White Sox first five guys get on, six guys get on, five score, and they get two runs the rest of the game. You don't expect that to happen. Things settle down after that. Bobby's just got to avoid that, and we're probably fine here. So you never know when when a team is incompetent as the White Sox going to start off with the first five guys scoring, right? But you don't expect that to happen. So the Guardians, I think, makes sense here. Don't want to go too heavy because the price isn't amazing, but the money line price has enough value that we're going to make the first of our first leg of our money line parlay of the day for Wednesday. 6.40 p.m. Eastern, we're going to go to the uh, – Cubs and the Padres. An extra slide in there. Um, Padres, A grade pick at minus 137. Model says they win 60% of the time. Why do they win 60% of the time? Part of the reason is they're at home. Part of the reason is Dylan Cease versus Kyle Hendricks is just a massive mismatch. Once you get past that, this game is who the heck knows. And I think you saw it on Monday in this game when it turned into. Um, you know, an 8-0 Cubs lead turned into a 9-8 Padres win. You saw that weakness in the Cubs bullpen. The Padres bullpen is much better. Anything can happen when you get to the relievers, but we should be set up for success from the start because of the mismatch here. Kyle Hendricks has been 
terrible in his first two starts. The underlying metrics are maybe slightly more promising than the ERA, but not by much. Uh, he, he looked worse and worse last year than from whenever that was. He actually looked moderately decent a couple of years ago. Um, I have no faith in him, and 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 I, I love Dylan Cease, and he's been a, a good pitcher for a long time. His first two starts, good numbers, underlying metrics, promising. Now in a pitcher from the ballpark, everything sets up for him to have a lot of success this year, and so I like to back him here uh, at a pretty reasonable price, minus 137. A great pick on the Padres. Now, of course, note the first five is going to be very appealing for the Padres because we avoid the bullpens. Here's the thing. Is the price going to be good? And that's why we have the model to help tell us that because I couldn't necessarily tell you what the probability is, what the price should be, how the price should change without the help of the model because it's hard for our brains to really wrap around all that stuff. And that's why I built a model to help do that. So again, Dub Club has the first five uh, probability that the Padres win, that they cover the run line. And so you can look at what the price needs to be in order to reach that A grade threshold and check that out over on Dub Club. Padres first five might be a great way to go if the price is right, but they might be looking at this saying the Padres have a massive pitching edge and they might make you pay minus 160 or something like that, minus, you know, minus 170. And you look at that and you say, that's just not a good price, right? So is the price right? That's why we have the model. And again, you can get all that first five information on Dub Club. If the price is right, I love Padres first five and get out of Dodge. I'm just assuming they're going to make us pay a tax for it. We'll find out in the morning because the first five markets haven't been established at the time of this recording. Uh, but either way, the full game price in the Padres makes a lot of sense because even though the bullpens are a crapshoot, the Padres should be favored by more than this. Minus 137 Padres, a grade pick. Brewers and the Reds, we got some nice little winner on the Brewers on Tuesday, and you saw on Monday, couldn't quite get it done after falling behind, but you saw that Reds bullpen, how terrible it is. The Brewers almost came back and won that one. I'm assuming we're going to be on the Brewers again. Right now, there's no line on this one. Wade Miley making his debut for the Brewers, Hunter Green for the Reds. Hunter Green's looked good in his first two starts. He's definitely the better pitcher, absolutely. The issue is, as we said, the Reds bullpen. How many innings can Hunter Green go? If he's able to get seven innings, the Reds have a good chance of winning this. If he's only going four or five, which happens sometimes as pitch count can get up, they're going to be in trouble. The Reds are, are should be favored in this one. According to the model, they win 52% of the time. And really what we're saying on this, that 52% is basically home field. What we're basically saying is the Brewers offense isn't great, but it's slightly better than the Reds. The relievers are better, but Hunter Green's the better pitcher. All of that cancels out. Reds should be slight favorites because they're at home. It's really all going to be about the price on this one. My hunches will be on the Brewers, as I mentioned before. I think the market is overvaluing the Reds as of now. We'll see. No line yet. Can't really say anything about it other than we'll have a pick in the morning and everybody in Dub Club will get that information. Marlins and the Yankees. This does have a line, no official pick, because I'm not sure there's a ton of value on anything right now, but there is just enough value on the Yankees for us to include the Yankees as the second leg of our parlay of the day on Wednesday. So we're going to play the Yankees with the Guardians money line parlay. I don't think the price is such that I want to play the Yankees by themselves, at least at the current price. And the reason why is strictly bankroll management. When we start talking about some of these bigger favorites, if they have value, they should be played. And there's times, and we've seen it with the Braves a little bit sometimes this year, where we're playing them a minus one or we're playing them a big money line or whatever. But the probability they win is just so high. Like, it makes sense. The Yankees probably they win 67% is where the price that it's at isn't bad, but it's not great, especially as long as we're in the you know, low minus 200s. But if you're playing the Yankees at like minus 220, minus 230, minus 240, you're putting a lot of risk for baseball can get random. And so we just don't think it's great to invest in it by itself. But we do a little bankroll management here with the parlay of the day, pairing it with the Guardians and saying, we now don't have a ton of eggs in this Yankees basket because we aren't playing them by themselves. We're getting to risk a little bit less to do so. And so that's why, why I like them here. The reason I like this pick, Marcus Stroman versus Ryan Weathers, is really no competition. Stroman's the much better pitcher. And I'm not sure why the model gives Weathers a 105. I don't think he's that good. He can't go deep. He's only gone nine innings in his two starts. His ERA is 
uh, respectable for, I guess. It's only two starts, but the underlying metrics aren't great. And I'm just have never been impressed really with what he's done. I expect the Yankees to do some damage off him, get him out early. And then the Yankees are a little bit left-handed heavy and don't project as well against lefties. Then they get into some of the righties and that's where they can really take advantage of things. Of course, um, the Marlins offense isn't very good. I like the Yankees here. It's hard to see the Marlins winning. It's Yankees or pass. It's just, I look at the price right now and say, I don't love the price in the Yankees by itself. I think the risk is just a little too, you know, it, it, the exposure, I should say, is just a little bit too much. The risk reward profile is okay. And again, as we always talk about, a bad pick doesn't become a good pick because you put in a parlay. This is a very okay pick. And so you put an okay pick in the parlay, it's still okay. The reason we like in the parlay is not about that the risk is greater than the reward because it's not. It's that the exposure by itself just isn't really worth it. The same thing when you look at the minus one, the minus one and a half doesn't really offer a lot of value here, especially with the Yankees being the home team, especially on a day that is going to be 50 degrees and we aren't expecting a lot of runs necessarily because of the weather. Yankee Stadium can play very hitter friendly in the summer and very pitcher friendly on the fringe parts of the season. Doesn't mean there won't be a ton of runs. Doesn't mean the Yankees can put up eight or, or whatever. It just means it's not the most conducive day for a big, you know, bunch of big home runs. So like the Yankees, I think the best way to play them here is in this parlay with the Guardians. It is a plus money odds uh, play. I don't remember the exact number. I calculated it out. I sent it out with everybody in the dub club. So if you aren't able to watch the show on every day, you will get that over on dub club. I'll be tracking those as well. See if we can get back on the winning track with our parlays of the day. Orioles and the Red Sox. Got us a nice one with the Orioles here on Tuesday in the Red Sox home opener. We're going to stay away from the side, and we're actually going to go to the over here on this one. This is one of the most hitter-friendly ballparks in baseball that is a little bit more resistant to the weather than any other ballpark, and the reason why is because the reason that there are runs at Fenway is less about home runs and more about weird park dimensions. It's really hard to hit a home run to center field out there, but it's pretty easy to hit a double because there is just so much space. You might, if the ball's carrying, the wind's blowing out, be easier to hit a home run left field. But even if it's not, a routine flight ball is a double off the green monster. Down right field is insanely short. It doesn't even matter what the weather is. If you get one around the pole, like... Yeah, again, a routine fly ball is there. There's also almost no foul territory in this park, which hurts because balls that get in the first, second, third, fourth rows would be out to other places. And compared to Oakland, you know, the 12th row would be an out, you know? Um, so a very hitter friendly ballpark. That's just a little bit more weather resistant. The weather's not great here for this night game. Upper forties, wind to be blowing in, might have a little bit of rain later. So it's going to be nasty weather. But I think this number should be nine. We're going to go over. <laughs> there's only one place that has a line on this right now. And there's multiple games that don't have lines where we normally pull from. ESPN is the only place that has lines right now for, for two of these games. This one and one other one. And so I'm just going with what ESPN has right now. They have eight and a half and it's minus 135. It's insane juice. I hate the juice. I'd probably rather play nine. I'd be hoping for even money at nine. Because the model is 9.3, I think this nine should be nine, like minus 120. So I'd be hoping for even money. I'd be playing it at minus 105, like minus 110. If you're at nine, minus 110, like I guess you're, you're starting to lose some value there. But eight and a half minus 135 offers some value because we get the win at nine, and nine is such a common outcome in baseball games. It has the a bulk of probability of landing online. It's not like it's, you know, it's not like it's like three, a winning margin of three in football, right? But it's still a good number to have. So over eight and a half, you can see only shop in town, internet on, on the web. I don't know. Uh, internet's on the town. Um, so it's the only likable from over eight and a half minus 135 is a B great play uh, for us here. Not the greatest value because the weather keeps it from being an A grade, but whether it's over eight and a half at this dumb juice that we've got here or over nine at much better odds, over makes a lot of sense for this ballpark, for these offenses. The Orioles offense is pretty good. The Red Sox offense projects to be weaker against lefties as they are very left-handed heavy, but the benefit for them is that Cole Irvin is not a guy that we have a lot of faith in. He didn't look good in his first start. The underlying metrics aren't that promising, and so he's a below-average pitcher. 
Cutter Crawford, not a bad pitcher for the Red Sox, but this Orioles offense is pretty good. We saw it here on Tuesday. You always trust them to put up runs, especially in a header-friendly ballpark like Fenway. So these bullpens, again, are solid, but we trust in this park that we just should end up with more runs than what you would normally think, especially then if you flip this into a Baltimore park. The park really matters here. Should we go over 8.5? B grade in Boston. Mets and the Braves, snow line on this one as of yet, as it appears, it'll be Alan Winans making his debut for the Braves. Gets a 96 grade against Jose Quintana, who gets a 104 grade. Quintana's numbers are good. His ERA is good. The underlying metrics are much worse for him. It's only two starts, so again, we're not going to make too much of it. But again, that's just of note. I would not look at his ERA for the season and say, hey, Quintana's found that he's great again because the underlying metrics – are a concern. So at best, we still think he's average. Average pitchers probably going to give up some runs to the Braves. So we expect the Braves to score. Don't know what the pick will be on this one because there's no line on it, but we do think the Braves will win this about two out of three times. And so again, we have all the probabilities for run line, first five, money line, everything over on Dub Club, and we'll have a pick on this one in the morning. 7.40 p.m. Eastern, Astros in the world. This is the other one that there's only one place that has a line, and so we are over 8.5 again at the dumb minus 135, but it's an A grade on this one as the model projects 9.6 runs. So a similar thing here. This number should be 9.5 in my opinion. I think we're off by a full run, uh, and I'll get to the reasons why here in just a second, but if you're playing at 9, same sort of thing. For A grade value, you're really looking at like minus 105 gets you the A grade value. Even money gets you the A grade value. Minus 110 and worse probably drops a letter grade worth playing but you lose a little bit didn't get as many runs as we expected uh here on the first night uh, of this series you know with the Ashes and the Royals but uh we were able to get to the window with the Royals as a plus odds money that winner and that was nice expecting more runs here in game two of this series not so much from the Astro side. They put up three runs against the Royals. We don't expect a ton more here because uh, the drop-off from Cole Reagans to Seth Lugo is not that big. Lugo is a very solid pitcher. So maybe uh, the drop off is one extra run. So we expect the Astros to get, you know, go from three runs to, you know, four or five. Um Lugo's look great in his two starts. Underline metric solid above average pitcher. Um the other question, of course, is just how deep Lugo can go as you get into a weaker Royals bullpen. Uh, Royals offense, respectable enough. They will face Spencer Arigetti, one of the Astros prospects, one of their better prospects. But we have to take note that the Astros pitching prospects and prospects in general are not what they were four or five years ago, as all their good prospects seemingly have come up, have been used, are already in the majors, like Hunter Brown, or traded away. Um you know, Drew Gilbert, you know, for example, with the reuniting of uh, Justin Verlander. And the Astros have like literally an entire rotation of pitchers on the IL at this point, maybe more than a rotation of pitchers. So usually I would say, you know, a team like the Astros that's this good, they bring up a kid and you got to trust it because they're so good. They're not going to bring someone up who's not ready. But like you look at this team, it's like he's like their 11th best pitcher at this point. Like, that's a whole different story. Yes, he's one of their better prospects, and that has meant something for the last decade for the Astros. I'm just not sure it does right now. I'm not saying he's going to be bad, but when you dive into it, the projection for him is more back in the rotation starter as his peak. And I'm guessing his peak isn't now because the Astros don't really want him in the rotation now, or else he would have already been there. He's only there because. Gosh, can I even count them all off? Verlander's on the IL, Fromberg's on the IL, McCullers on the IL, Garcia's on the IL. Uh, God, I'm sure there's there's probably like, I think there's like maybe two. I can't even remember them all. So um, the the bottom line is I don't really think I'm expecting great things from him. Uh, meaning you expect the Royals to put up more runs than they did uh, than on Tuesday because uh, the Astros got a pretty decent start from Javier. Here's the other thing. These bullpens are a little bit taxed. Why is that? They're taxed because they played extra innings on Tuesday. That was an extra inning there as well. The Astros bullpen, though, specifically is taxed because when Fromber went down, uh, was a, wasn't able to make a start Monday. Uh, the kid they started for the emergency relief appearance, unfortunately, just wasn't able to really find the strike zone. Sometimes that happens. And because of that, the bullpen had to combine for eight and two thirds. That's a lot of innings. Uh, and then have an extra inning game the next night. 
this bullpen's pretty tired at this point. So we've got, uh, and, and we've got a guy coming up in Arigetti who I, I'm, I mean, yeah, in a perfect world, like he's going to go, you know, six innings, but like, I, I'm just not sure, you know, he's got the talent to do that right now against a competent major league offense. And this Royals team isn't amazing, but like their offense is competent. Um, they've got, a, you know, obviously Witt is fantastic and they've got a couple other guys, you know, Perez and, and Melendez, they're decent enough hitters. They've got some competent guys in the lineup and, and getting him to the lineup twice, I feel like would be a victory. And so I just don't know where all the innings are going to come from. And so I like the over here. I think there's maybe even more value than the model realizes because, you know, when you, when you take a game from Tuesday that had, you know, six runs in nine innings and you say, well, but you're dropping from Javier to Arigetti, you know, you bump up another couple runs, you, you go from Reagan to Lugo, you bump up another run, you, you had the bullpen situation, bump up another run, boom, all of a sudden you're at 10 runs. And that's what the model says, 9.6. So I think over eight and a half, over nine just makes way too much sense here. It's not going to be the greatest weather situation. And, and Kansas City can play insanely hitter friendly. It can be a lot of fun in there in the summer when it's like 100 degrees wind blowing out. We won't be having that. It'll be mid to low 60s and we'll have a slight breeze blowing in. So the weather will almost completely counteract the fact that this is a very hitter friendly ballpark. Why is it hitter friendly? Not a lot of foul ground. But I just think there's going to be a lot of base hits, a lot of singles, a lot of doubles, a lot of walks, because I'm just not sure... You know, you there there will need to be what at minimum uh what 51 outs, if my math is correct, they're right, 27 plus 24 at minimum number of outs. Yeah, it's, it's, so 51 outs minimum, maybe more. And I'm feeling like you know, I can find about 20 of them. <laughs> I don't know where the other ones are coming from. There's gonna be a lot of questionable innings, a lot of guys on base, a lot of ways to have crooked number numbers. And like I said, I think this number should be set at nine and a half, and they should be daring you to go over a number like nine and a half, given that you know nine is very possible to land on and saying you're gonna give up all your value by going over nine and a half just because you're banking on the pitching to be you know, so tired or daring you to go under and say, yeah, it's great weather. You get nine on the win, but hello, have you seen what's going to be pitching here? That puts you in a real conundrum. And so that's what I think they should be doing. Instead, I know that the weather is not really conducive for this, but we've seen this so far here in the first part of April, a lot of games where the weather hasn't been conducive and we can still get a bunch of runs. This game sets up for it. Bad Royals bullpen, a lot of questionable pitching for the Astros and their fatigue and all the innings they've thrown. Astros have a great offense. Royals have a good enough offense. The lack of foul ground there helps. Over eight and a half, a grade play in Kansas City. And they're wrapping us up. A's and the Rangers, 55 degrees in Arlington. I'm projecting the roof to be closed, as I mentioned earlier. We will see on that one if that affects the total or not. Not really much of a total edge either way, though. Uh, in, in my opinion, I would probably be looking under if the roof were to be open because I think the ball wouldn't fly quite as well. Uh, but with the roof closed, I don't really think there's a way to look at it there. But Rangers minus one, minus 132 odds gets us to a B-grade pick. Cody Bradford and Ross Stripling. Stripling, very respectable so far this season. Two very solid starts. Underline metrics, very solid. His rating now 102, very solid. Uh, you know, he keeps doing this. He'll be in the 90s soon enough. Cody Bradford, two very good starts. Low two ERAs, underlying metrics, okay. Uh, very respectable pitching. Um, very respectable offenses. Again, the A's offense has never really been their problem. The pitching's been their problem. They're trying to patchwork their pitching together, of course, with guys like Stripling, Wood, et cetera. Uh, you know, we'll see how it goes from here. But, I mean, this is a pretty even-ish contest with the exception of the fact that while the A's bats aren't bad, you know, the Rangers bats are still better. While Ross Tripling isn't bad, Cody Bradford's still better. While the A's have a couple of good back-end guys in their bullpen, the Rangers bullpen's still better. Games in Arlington, so that's one of those just kind of death by a thousand cuts where the Rangers have enough small edges everywhere, enough medium edges everywhere to really add up. So the model says the Rangers win this two out of three times. Here's the reason why I like this pick extra is the same thing about the White Sox. The A's used Mason Miller, uh, not for two innings, of course, but only for one inning, um, to close out the win on Tuesday. He's by far their best reliever. That doesn't mean he can't pitch again. If he does pitch, he's probably not going to be quite as efficient, quite as effective. And so 
I think that just gives us a little bit of extra help here. We're going to play the minus one again. If you don't have that at your books, the way you create this market is you bet to win a certain amount of the money line and you risk that on the run line. And that creates a minus one market for you. The implied odds of that again at minus 132 worth the play. We might push because this game could easily be four, three Rangers. It was four, three A's on Tuesday. Could easily be five, four. Um, that's very much on the table, but in general, you just have to think that if the Rangers can figure out how to not let one dude hit three home runs off of them, they can win and they probably can just chip away because their offense is just that much better than Oakland's. The, you know, the relievers are just that much better where they can just play add on, get one here, get one here, get one here. This offense has done it uh, for the last year now. And it, it's a situation where you just expect the Rangers to kind of put up a run every other inning or something like that and get the victory. Again, the Saints team isn't bad. They set up okay with stripling. It's nothing terrible. It's just they're outmatched on offense. They're outmatched every inning pitching. And again, having used Miller, their by far best reliever puts them in a little bit of a tougher spot. So that makes the Rangers, I think, a good investment. The best way, according to the model, of intersecting the probability of winning and the best value comes on playing Rangers minus one at minus 132 odds is a B grade pick. And that's all we've got here for you today. Again, remember, sign up today on Dub Club. Get that 10 day free trial to start out that QR code with the link in the show description. There will be a lot of information, a lot of picks, a lot of first five, a lot of ways to make money. Play of the day as well. The free play of the day over on Twitter has done great. The play of the day over on Dub Club hasn't done as well. Again, it'll turn around. It always has. Uh, unfortunately, it started off bad. Uh, but whether we have bad stretches in the middle, early, late, doesn't really matter. We always have more good stretches than bad stretches. So hang in there. Hopefully it turns around here for this Wednesday. Uh, maybe we can get some uh, some things going going right, and we'll have the other teams hit into those double plays, and the other teams have their relievers blow, blow things and stuff like that. But it'll turn around eventually. Uh, so just hang in there with me. Uh, and, again, if you're already with us on, over on Dub Club, again, we really thank you for your support. So I've got, as always, best of luck. Remember, you can't eat your betting money, but please don't bet your eating money.